Okay, good evening everybody. Uh, thank you for coming out this evening. It's great to see you guys all come out here um, on such a cold evening um, for an important topic like we have uh, tonight. Um, hopefully everybody can hear me well. If we're too loud, just let us, let us know, but uh, it's perfect, okay? Cool, so if uh, everybody um, is not aware, uh, my name is uh, David Morio. I'm a counselor with the town of Swan River. Um, been sitting on the uh, business consortium meeting um, group for last few months and part of the topics there is like crime reduction and some of the issues with that and the topic of community or the community citizens on patrol program has been uh, brought up a few times and the RCP is looking for someone to help spearhead the uh, program to get it going here in Swan River to help address the crime issues here that we have. So knowing the person, me, where I haven't learned to say no yet um, to different things, I've stepped forward to help get this uh, program running and hopefully we can do some good things. Um, like I said, thanks for coming out tonight. Uh, for a lot of people that uh, can't attend tonight, but if you just want to let them know, um, I've engaged uh, Mr. Jerry Bergen there to uh, record tonight's um, presentation, and then we'll post it on the Town of Swan River's YouTube page so that people can watch it at home and get the information uh, if they couldn't be here tonight. So, um, so to get um, things moving, um, I would like to invite uh, our Mayor Lance Jacobson to come up and say a few words before we start into the formal uh, presentation. Thank you, David. <clears throat> I'd like to welcome everybody here tonight uh, in this important discussion that uh, for our community. We've seen over the past year and maybe a little bit more uh, increases in crime, and in particular, to the small theft and to large extensive theft, which is quite concerning. Your council has been very informed about this, and we're very deeply concerned. And we have been working with the RCMP and lobbying the Justice Minister for support as well. In a recent survey that's out there right now, so far we've seen some of the big pieces that are important to the community. And some of those uh, responses have been, uh, well, the top priorities have been uh, the community and with the issues of crime. And when crime does happen, it does affect us all. And uh, that's, you know, including myself. <clears throat> we need to work together as a community to fight crime. And we must work with the RCMP, organize groups, and with your council to solve these issues. Tonight is a good start to begin working together. And I thank Council Morio for heading up this task and working with Mr. Henson as well and getting this uh, uh, moving along. I hope you find this informative and you can help to work towards organizing our own citizens on patrol and dealing with the issues and the crime in our community. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, thanks, uh, Mr. Jacobson. Um, so moving along, uh, just to let you know, one of the reasons why I did uh, step up to help do this um, is I know how it feels to be a victim of crime. Um, since I've moved here um, about eight years ago, I've had my house broken into, and as of last fall, I've had some major equipment stolen out right out of the back of my truck, right in my front yard. And plus four incidences of my personal vehicles being broken into with the minor uh, nickel and dime crime that goes along with that. So, so I personally know what it feels like to be a victim of crime. Um, so. And then with the increase in social media, it goes out there, things like this happen and it's immediately widespread and the awareness goes along with it. So, so with that, residents become upset and they're concerned and I hear and I feel it that uh, people are not safe in their homes anymore, which is unfortunate and that's why we're here tonight to correct that and move forward. So, 
So the cause of crime is, uh, there's a lot of many root causes of that, and that's a complete different discussion um, for another day and in different groups, but we need to take action, okay? And we uh, agree that a local community uh, citizens on patrol program would be a good start for this, and that's by putting more boots on the ground for a deterrence in crime in our community. And to do that, uh, we have two ways that we can put more boots on the ground. Uh, we can pay someone to do it, okay? We don't wanna do it ourselves, we get someone else to do it. And that's usually either RCMP, community safety officers, but those types of things comes with a cost, and we don't like that. Usually increased cost for more RCMP or community safety officers, that's gonna result in higher taxes. The other option that we have is to do our, ourselves. And that's what I feel is a better option um, to do it. And that's where this Citizens on Patrol program comes in, okay? Um, we will be the more boots on the ground, more eyes and ears in our community to help the RCMP, and we're able to fill the voids where the RCMP can't in their patrol schedules. So let's take our community back from the criminals and let's uh, listen to um, the lady to my right here, Ms. Twyla Ludwig. Uh, she's the Secretary Treasurer for COP Manitoba. Uh, she'll have a presentation for us here to let us know what COPP is all about, what the requirements are and what the expectations are. So, and with her, she has a gentleman. He's the chairperson of the Roblin Citizens on Patrol program, Mr. Pat, uh, what's your last name? Dietrich. So there's a wealth of knowledge here between these two individuals that can give us some insight and some guidance to move forward. So, so at the end of our presentation, we'll have an opportunity for question and answers and go from there. So thank you very much. Okay. You want that one? I'll start with this one. Okay. That's good. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Twyla Ludwig. I want to give you a little bit of background. I'm, uh, in, I've been in the municipal field for over 30 years. I got involved with the uh, Roblin COPP group uh, a few years ago. I'm the secretary for that group. Uh, through that involvement, I became a board member for the Manitoba COPP program. Um, I just want to say how much I... Uh, believe in this kind of program and I am so out of my comfort zone right now because I really don't like public speaking. <laughs> so just so you know, bear with me. I will go through the slides and I'll, it'll just be a quick run through uh, just to give you an idea of the, the program. Um, the difference between the Manitoba board and the local group, um, the quick overview is that the provincial board is is there to, to support and, and help build our local groups and what, uh, address what our needs are. And uh, it's really been an eye-opener being involved in that, uh, giving more background, setting up policies, and where, where the liaison for the, for the local groups. Um, with uh, Pat's role in uh, our community, uh, as chairperson, it's overseeing, getting things set up. We meet on a regular basis. Um, right now, there hasn't been as many break and enters and so forth, so we only meet once every two months um, where we had been meeting monthly. And those are, I wanna say, informal meetings meant for community uh, sharing information uh, amongst our, ourselves of problem areas, what to watch for, tips of uh, reporting some of these things, that type of thing. And I, I want to say that I think it's more effective if we do uh, this more as an information discussion and ask questions throughout. Um, we have some of the things that we'd set up, what we found worked for, uh, or is working for us, and we got 
um, I guess, that information from the Russell group south of us because they had been active for a while and they came and met with us and um, gave some of some of the tips that they'd been um, using for a while. So we've developed uh, Excel spreadsheets and whatnot for reporting things and uh, a summary of shift notes that we send to our RCMP liaison. Um, we're there to work with them. We also were established in the, in the Roblin area because we had such a shortfall with uh, RCMP uh, members within the Prairie Mountain Detachment. Um, at one point, we were down by 43% for, for the members. Out of, out of 14 members, we only had eight working members. So we know that, the, the um, criminals know that, and so we really saw a spike in activity and break and enters and that type of thing. So uh, that's why we got involved and uh, we definitely saw a shift once the word got around that we were doing more uh, frequent patrols and you know problem areas that we would always see um, something happening, uh, somebody sitting there at night, then we started making our regular rounds there and they've moved from that location. So it's, there's benefits to stuff like that. So I'll go through the presentation from there and then if you've got questions, please feel free to ask. Okay, this just gives an idea of the setup for the uh, Manitoba COPP. And with that, representatives on that board are the Winnipeg Police Services, Brandon Police Services, uh, RCMP, and the Provincial Coordinator. And there's been some change with that right now. We're just in the, the midst of changing. Um, our funding partner is going to change as of April 1st this year. So it's kind of a transition period, but the board is still um, operating. Uh, we have representatives in each region. So the purpose of the COPP to work with law enforcement and partners to prevent crime and create safer environment. So I'm not going to read every slide, but this is part of the training manual and I'm hoping, and I must say I'm really impressed with the turnout that you've got and uh, it's, it's a very worthwhile program. I, I know we're a smaller community. Um, the commitment that we ask for members is uh, about four hours a month and we do our setup so that we have uh, teams and of, of three or four, and so we'd schedule for that week that they uh, work it amongst themselves, that two go out, uh, they can decide which night they want to go out, um, they could go two different nights, two hours each, or uh, we basically take whatever hours they can provide to us. We have some that only feel comfortable going through the day, and in the summertime, we did see a lot of activity on one end of town of things happening in the day, so it was uh, worthwhile having those um, uh, members just go out and patrol and record those notes share that information with the RCMP and it was just kind of a corner to watch, especially if it's the same time of day that this is happening or that the, the Thursday night seemed to be the hot spot for us. <laughs> uh, so again, this is your job description and, and all of that would, 
will be outlined in the, um, it's basically a registration form or your, of your intent or your interest in the program and it'll, it'll give you the details in there. Uh, what we also um, have decided is what works for us is um, the majority of our patrols are done uh, with partners. It's only for recording and observing. We don't get out of our vehicles. We decided we didn't want to put the, the um, magnets on the vehicle to identify who we were. Uh, we, we just have a um, routine of where we're going out, which buildings we're checking, and we make notes on that. Um, other communities from, from the uh, provincial board, uh, the information sharing that we've got from other groups is they will make um, uh, a designated day f throughout the month that we're going to watch how many garage doors do you see open? Uh, what can you do to try and improve public awareness to get people thinking about how they can be a part of this um, a, as a solution to the problem? Um, that's the deterrence by patrolling. And like I said, we had a common spot where there was always somebody gathering. Once we started doing the, the routine, they, they've left that area. Uh, the other thing with the patrolling, we want to make sure that we are calling in. Uh, there, there's a, a number assigned. Uh, we let them know when we're going out, how long we're going out for, because they also get calls because they see a strange vehicle driving through the back alleys at two o'clock in the morning and, and they know it's us. And th at times they will stop to uh, uh, share information with us or we share information with them. So it's, it's been very useful. The um, Manitoba COPP, they also provide us with the bag of um, items. We've had the, uh, the shift notes we keep in there um, where we can just fill in the blanks with some of those things. Um, they've got a flashlight, the, the notebooks, um, the high-vis vests, uh, that type of thing. Um, there are other communities that they have gone out uh, do the foot patrol when there's been a, um, a community event and they just want extra um, boots on the ground, just again, observing, taking notes, making the information um, available for the RCMP. Some areas, um, again, with the, the foot patrols, it's, it's just the extra step in there where majority of our time is spent in the vehicle and just m monitoring the area. Um, we've, we've got some with uh, local businesses going to check that their that their doors all their doors are closed on on the shop at the behind the shop that kind of thing um, I'm not sure if you have much uh, bike patrol in here there are a couple of the larger centers that that do that as well but ours have mainly been the vehicle patrol Um, we had some, uh, I guess, activity of people having things stolen from their deep freezes that they keep out in the garage and whatnot. So information like that was still useful to share with the, 
local detachments so that they could monitor that area a little more closely. Um, those things, again, happen in broad daylight. Uh, the other activity, it might be the two o'clock or three o'clock in the morning. I, I, again, it's just getting the word out there of what's happening. You see the same vehicle, try get the license plate. Um, there are some neighbors that they don't necessarily want to get involved. We've asked them to um, take a picture if they can, send that to us. We will forward it on. Uh, if, if they don't want to talk to the RCMP directly, we're kind of the middleman. Um, uh, this is just kind of the training session. We won't get into it, but it's just giving you an idea of what to start watching for uh, in the training. It, they'll give you so many seconds to look at the slide and then ask you, ask you specific questions about um, if the garage door, if the camper door was open, where was the sat satellite dish, how many bikes, that kind of thing. Again, these are just uh, observation techniques to look for what's on the license plate. Um, the, the nice thing with the with the phones on the cam or the cameras on the phone now is most people will try and take a snapshot of it. If they can't get the plate, at least they get an idea of what the vehicle is like. These are just the at the end of the evening when we're done, uh, we submit our our shift notes t and s scan them and email them to our RCMP liaison. Then again, they've got it for future reference. We try and call into the uh, RCMP number as well so that they know when we have gone home. Uh, Pat was just reminding me, uh, we have a very good working relationship with our, our CMP members and uh, we try and find out which member is on and most of them share, share their cell phones with us. If we, if we had to get a hold of them directly, we can do that. Uh, there are some that will even say, if, if you notice um, routine activity, call them. Uh, if you can't get a hold of anybody else at the at the shop, they will forward forward it on to the working member. <coughs> um, do you want to speak on some of the other stuff? No. Okay. Uh, so, kind of to wrap up these slides. Uh, part of the Manitoba uh, requirement is the letters of agreement from, from the new members, uh, having group insurance, getting the criminal record checks done, that kind of thing. Uh, locally, we are under the municipal general, general municipal insurance program as a group of volunteers. So that's how we do that. Um, the municipal council gave a, a small a donation to start off seed money for us because we wanted to kind of enhance the um, the items in in uh, the tools for us. We had donations for binoculars and uh, larger flashlights, and then uh, with the seed money, it was to get a dash cam. Um, and oh, we got uh, we were going to get binoculars, and then they ended up being donated to us. Um, we we did a fundraiser as well, just to one help get the word out there and let people know that this is happening, uh, and two again just to give us some seed money. You can structure your committee in whatever manner you want. Uh, right now, for Roblin, uh, 
all of the members have been doing it on a volunteer basis. We, we don't get paid anything for mileage. We record all of the mileage because, again, with the provincial program, those stats are important for them. Uh, but it's been a small group, and when you're doing it in the, in the urban area, um, it, it hasn't been, um, I guess, too, too financially difficult for, for the group. But that, that's a local choice, and it depends. Uh, we've also had some, I want to say, sponsorship where some businesses are willing to um, donate or, or help out, or they provide free coffee or something along that line. Uh, but it's definitely uh, uh, appreciative from the businesses that they see that there's um, somebody else helping uh, be the eyes and ears. Uh, and as I mentioned, those the, the, the commitment that we ask for is about four hours, uh, but not everybody does that as, as patrolling. Some of that is um, helping to do the, the public awareness campaigns, putting the posters up, um, just any way they can. There was um, some communities were involved in the speed watch program. That's been kind of, um, I guess, phasing out. But we think that that's still a, a, a value. We have Highway 5 and 83 that intersect our community, and it tends to be a hot spot for, for speedy, speeders and um, with the monitoring, just the, the radar sign alone tends to have people slow down. And so we can put in those, those hours as volunteer time as well. Uh, it's, it's your choice on where you want to focus your efforts. So that's kind of all that we have to go through for the, for the slides and so forth. And then if you want to ask questions, just fire away. Okay, thank you, Twyla. Um, so that was a quick overview of the presentation. And if uh, Twyla and her group has no objections, I could post that also so that people can read that at their leisure. Because some of the slides that were a little bit uh, meaty there with next steps and things like that uh, um, can be digested at their leisure. So, so um, with that, does anybody have any questions? Uh, okay, uh, Mr. White. Uh, yeah, you're getting ahead of me here, but uh, at the end of the evening, uh, there's some sign-up sheets at the back table there. Um, like, it's no commitment at this point. It's just expressing, expression of interest sheets to say that you're interested um, so that I can keep track of the people and then get in touch with you further when we have formal sign-up sheets and ready to proceed going forward. So, okay. Uh, anyone else? Stacy. So if you, you don't sign up for this specifically, but you're like the bar owner or you're the ladies that are walking their dogs every day and are seeing everything, how in your community are those people reporting? They want to report, but they don't want to drive around in the evenings. They already have their routine and they know their routine well. So how are you, how are you doing that in your community? We have one lady that uh, came knows who we are with COPP. There's a phone number. They can, oh, there's a phone number. They can phone the uh, uh, municipal office and get a hold of uh, like Twyla or myself and we'll be a li liaison to the RCMP. We have one that she said, 
we have this going on at three o'clock on my street every night. Okay. So she told us, and now we go past there and checking on it. Right. So because some she of the doesn't wanna, she doesn't want to be the person going out there right. and telling us. So. Also, um, we, of course, when you call nine one one, it goes somewhere else, right? So people, it's really important for people that they're speaking to someone that they know. So if something like that was set up here, I think that would be that would build a, a, a connector a little bit better and a better partnership. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Stacy. Any other questions? Right, we're in the back. So say if like when we're doing this that we actually like see crime happening but it's smaller crime. Like are these people going to be arrested or charged with some sort of like consequence? Because it seems like it would be a lot of work like driving around or whatever and reporting all this but then seeing those individuals still out every single day stealing. Like how does that work? <laughs> The thing is, uh, with COPP, they don't want you getting involved, jumping out and grabbing hold of a person or anything like that. What you do is take the notes, write it down, and then it's all forwarded on to the RCMP. Uh, through. So uh, we have two different books. One that we take all our notes down. There is one that is a formal one, the same as the RCMP is use when those can t be those notes are taken if they go to court i have it in okay, in the bag here they essentially eventually go to court <laughs> if they're charged like if they're like what i'm saying is like hey a business might have gotten their like a couple businesses say got their garages or sheds broken into and small stuff is stolen like a random like mirror and a vacuum head and like stuff like that Okay, well, this is reported, but what, like, there's obviously really not a whole lot that can be done because it's considered small crime, right? But then they keep coming back every single night and stealing these small things and breaking doors and stuff, but, so it's kind of, like, frustrating, like, if there's volunteers driving around all the time, but, and it's the same people that are being caught because they're not being charged and not having any consequences for it. Like, I'm just saying that that part might be a little bit frustrating. I'll comment on that. It is very frustrating. Um, but the one thing that we do encourage is that all of those things are reported, not only for the COPP program, but for the RCMP. Most of this stuff is, is stats driven. So if we don't report all those little things, then it's like, well, there's nothing really happening. And while there may not be charges, it does um, give the RCMP an idea of activity in that area. And then, okay, what time is it happening? Is it the same time? Is it the same group of people? Um, the frustrating part is they don't see anything happening to it, but until somebody started to report that their their uh, freezer was being broken into, then the neighbors started talking and it was happening other places, then word gets around and then they're, they're trying to monitor that area or what's happening with the stuff that they're stealing. So we, we still encourage everybody to report those little things. We get that, again, th the resources, they're not going to necessarily take every, every item to court, but it gives them the ability to build a file if they need to. And I think with that, uh, just building on, like through the training session, there will be things that will be outlined, like crime in progress, where you can call 911 immediately. Um, but then, the, like the example of freezer getting broken into, those are information that's passed in to the RCMP and the shift reports that creates the pattern where they can create a dossier and a file and move forward. So, um, any other questions? Uh, 
the gentleman asked how quickly the information would get forwarded to where? To the police. It depends what it is. Uh, my partner and I were out one night. We seen a guy walking down the street that was intoxicated. He was trying to break in. Uh, we called it in. 45 minutes later, they had him arrested. Uh, if it's something that's not, out of, which is out of the norm, uh, we write it down, and every morning after our patrol, we take it in to the office, and it's uh, forwarded on to the RCMP. So it's within. See, we were out at 3 o'clock, so by 9 o'clock, that morning, they'll have it. My question is more on the reporting aspect of it and information sharing. You as a group, let's say we have 20 members in Swan River, for example, and uh, is there any means of communicating with those members who are not on duty, who have not, ex not uh, been out on patrol, but like get the information that we're looking for a specific vehicle during patrols and things of that nature. Is there any sharing of that? Because most people here have computers now, and it would be easy if we had a, uh, a uh, emails to all those people that that was sent out to, and uh, therefore we'd be all aware of what's going on in our community. Is there, a, could you comment on that please? Definitely, uh, what we decided to, again, just for the information sharing, uh, we created our members list and it gives our email address, our phone number, our cell number, that type of thing. Uh, we created our Facebook page as well uh, for Robland COPP. Uh, it's not used that often, but it was to try and get the word out there that we are active and we are patrolling. Um, we also do um, group messages like with the ones that go out more frequently, um, and there are uh, common, <laughs> common places to watch or common people that we kind of try to keep everybody in the loop of what's happening, what's the latest on, on this issue. Uh, so we, that's the only time we use that list is for that purpose. It's, it's to try and get the word out there as quick as possible. Um, also, we, we had a couple of, I want to say, major events with the RCMP uh, monitoring because of serious um, thefts in neighboring communities. And they contacted uh, our, our former coordinator right away. They shared the information with us as well because they know we have the, the um, group email list so that we could forward uh, photos of the vehicle, descriptions of the people, and it was an awareness thing. So it was, it was immediate. And I think like uh, with the rest, like with the RCMP and emergency services, there's shift handoff reports. It's like uh, from one shift, there's a written duty log of what you, of the infractions or suspicious vehicles that were there. And then the upcoming shift, can review that before they start their patrol or while they're, they're doing it. So that information is, is passed along. Yeah, so like there's a communication from one shift to the next. So, okay. Any other questions? I don't believe we've had any members that I know of that we're, we're drawn into that. We can, uh, again, the, the formal book that Pat was holding up, that's, that's the um, statement. If, uh, it may depend on how serious the, the uh, event is, um, but most of us have been using um, uh, the informal booklet for uh, keeping track of you know, when a door has been left wide open in January at 2 a.m. and um, you know what garage doors are open, that kind of thing. Uh, we had a recent one with somebody working on snowmobiles at 3 a.m. Um, we, we report those things as well. So I think like that, what you say, the through the training program, through the formal um, 
you'll get taught how to write a formal note, like a statement in that little book. So the better you do that, then that's the evidence that uh, just like with RCMP or EMS or other emergency services, that's what's usually drawn on so that you're not have to go to court yourself. Another question somewhere? Yeah, when, when, uh... Is there any sheet that you carry with you, like uh, a current sheet, which you put the time that you saw this, what it was, so you, there, is, there is paper that you carry and you complete during shift, correct? Yeah, this one. Uh. Actually, I'll just describe this one. So what, uh, again, a tip from our neighbors from, from Russell, um, they had created their own. It gives the RCMP emergency contact number and then the, the non-emergency number. Uh, it's our patrol checklist. It lists the driver's name, the passenger's name, our vehicle make, model, uh, the start time, the mileage when we started, the mileage when we end, our license plate. Uh, we also have the, the, our observations, what the temperature is, weather, visibility, all of that. We, we start off with that. And then it's just a comment section. But on the back side of it, we went through and listed all of our businesses and we would mark down when we went by that business and if we happen to go by it a couple of times and saw anything different in between that we would comment on we'd mark both times down and then we'd comment on what what the notice was um, you know in in this uh, in the winter time where you went by the first time and you didn't see tracks through the 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 back at the back door but when you went around the second time you noticed that then you could mark it down uh, again if you're able to get a hold of an RCMP member and and comment on something like that but if they're not available then they know to kind of watch that area for for later or follow up with with that business to see if they had any any issues we used to use a night patrol sheet with the RCMP, which detailed something that when we went by some place and we saw something unusual, we filled it out, similar to that. But mm -hmm. they should, if we decide to make a, we should take a look at that form. Yep. I think it would be beneficial to us. And as we members. we brought a bunch of forms. I I actually put it on a jump drive too. Uh, again, we wanna we wanna help neighbors too, just like they helped us. And so we have the spreadsheets made. If you want to use them, great. If not, you, you could, it just gives you an idea. It's a template. You can build on it and make it work for you. I guess mine isn't so much a question for citizens on patrol, but just some comments from, from just uh, being a community member, a business owner, an ex counselor uh, living in this community my entire life. I'd have to say the crime levels in Swan River are probably at crisis level. I think as a community, I'm, I'm saddened to see the small amount of people that have actually came out tonight. Um, it's good to see that we have the majority or a few of counselors here. I think we have to be a little more creative. Um, you know, nothing against the RCMP. I know that they're, uh, they have, uh, their, their time is limited, but there is crime going on in the evenings between 3 and 5 a.m. that would just uh, blow your mind. Like, it's, it's, it's insane. I don't know what the cure is. Uh, I know that we have to come together as a community and work on this, pr this problem together. Um, you know, maybe talking, you know, it's talking about funding, different models. I think as a council, they're gonna have to uh, look at how many police officers we have, look at our funding model, possibly, you know, I, when I was on council, I asked the RCMP or we lobbied to try to get the hours changed um, from our officers and we didn't have any luck, you know. The, the criminals know that the, that the RCMP go to bed at 2.30, maybe not go to bed, but they're not on the streets as much after 2.30 and they know that. I didn't know that, but, but the criminals know that and it gets around very fast. Uh, there's other communities that have, um, you know, their own town detachment. I'm not saying that it's exactly what we do, but I think we have to get creative. And, 
you know, if we have to stop funding of a couple RCMP and hire town constables that are going to take care of our community in certain hours when we know that there's actual problems going on, um, it's just, just different ways of looking at it. And like I said, it's unfortunate that this place isn't packed because it's, it's unreal what's going on. There's story after story, day after day. Uh, me and a few other people were, were going out and touring in the evenings. It's, it's, it's disheartening. Uh, I have two businesses in this community. I've never felt the way I feel right now of, of actually thinking of, you know, selling my businesses. When, when, you know, since February, which is gonna be, I've had so many items taken. You, you can only have so much insurance until your rates are gonna go up. Uh, it, it's, 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 it's painful. Uh, you know, I've, like I said, I've lived in this community. I love this community, but to see the way it's going downhill, with vandalism, uh, people scared. You know, I had one local business owner just a, a bought a flower shop. She's been broken into twice before she's even opened the doors. It's it it it's in crisis level. I like I said, I don't know the answer. I wish this place would have been full and there'd be some more brainstorming. But um, I, I do feel citizens on the patrol um, can definitely help. Um, but there has to be more communication with RCMP. You know, they are looking for certain people. There's, there's warrants for people's arrest. Nobody knows who these people are. There's, there's, there's got to be more, there's got to be some sort of a, a piece that can be arm's length that community members can see, okay, if they're wanted, this person is wanted. You know, you see them driving down the street, you see them walking around, like, w how can we not get pictures of these individuals? They've committed a crime, they're wanted under a uh, warrant, how come that information isn't out there, or can we get that information out there? Could could I just add to that? Sure can. I I understand and I and I fully agree. Um, one of the things that I think we have to recognize is um, a lot of times our CMP are blamed for the lack of action but I know that locally we've had the problem where they've they've gone after the repeat offenders and it's the it's the court the justice system that does nothing or slaps their hand and that's about it so it it gets very frustrating for the RCMP as well um, and I saw Rec walk in the room, so <laughs> all I would encourage you is that th that's your liaison as well, because uh, it's trying to get the message out there that the, the system has to change. I think we're very fortunate in Romland because they have told us who they're looking for, and we look out for the, these people. Uh, as a just the general public, they can't let the general public know. We're a little different than that, but it does help them if we do see them, we report them where they are and stuff like that, so we've helped them along. It, it, it's frustrating, like you said, you keep getting in, broke in, broke in, but. Okay, thanks, uh, Mr. Rintoni. Hi there, I was just wondering if you, I believe in the COPP program, I think it will be beneficial for our community. I'm wondering if you brought any stats from your community in terms of um, perhaps if there has been a reduction in crime, what does that look like? I have a few more questions, but I want to start with that one if I could. I didn't bring the stats, but it we did see a drop. Um, we. Uh, like I said, part of part of our issue was we had the RCMP numbers down quite a bit, and so when we had started uh, patrolling on a regular basis, um, the the numbers seemed to drop off with the break and enters. Um, were you going to? It, it's something we could probably get to you if you if you want. I can give you my card later. Absolutely, or okay. you can share it with Mr. Morio as well. Uh, my next question is, is that um, in part of your presentation, you stated that 
on your patrols, you would see the same individuals at a certain location. My question is, um, and then they moved away because they saw COPP. What exactly happened, or did you just move the crime from one area of your community to another? Where did those people go? Because, I mean, the criminals aren't just going to stop because they see a COPP person driving by. They're going to, I mean, these criminals are, this is what they do. They're smart. They're clever. They know how to get away. They know how to be, how to j jump the law just enough that they're, not going to get caught. So I guess my question is, is where, do your, where did your criminals go when you moved them from one area? <laughs> that was off the record. <laughs> we, we definitely saw a, a drop. Now, where they went to, we didn't see other problem areas starting up. So we don't know if they just went further out into the rural area, but we didn't see the handoffs as frequent as when they were they were in our recreation grounds kind of thing because it's it's a quieter area it's not as well lit that kind of thing and my final question is um, in terms of crime and in terms of these criminals um, they're going to do what they need to do to to steal I mean people aren't in my opinion aren't just going to steal to steal they're stealing it to pawn it off to make a few dollars for something else um, has your community done anything I'm not sure if you want to comment on it or not but what has your community done to address the problems prior to the crime Su such as um, housing drug issues things like that um, just looking for some advice from your community again it's been the information sharing I, I think any any time that if if there's somebody new that's moved in and then all of a sudden there's a frequent um, short-term activity then that's what we share to the RCMP um, the the other thing as as a community we were looking at with uh, cameras on Main Street, and uh, and we've got a local business very in, involved with that, and he's he's worked uh, with the RCMP, um, sharing information and and getting that out there as well. And the the nice thing about um, those extras that come in is the criminals aren't expecting that part of it, so they didn't know originally where these cameras were and whatnot and I will say that's one of the things that um, in a small town it's hard to do because everybody wants to talk about where they put the cameras or what are you going to do with that especially if it's council well you're spending the taxpayers money where are you going to put that well some of that stuff we don't want to share uh, it's for those that need to know so that we can try and keep a handle on this Thank you. At any time, are you uh, visible in the community? I'm just thinking of, for us, we have rodeo or there's some big events in the area. Is there any time you're on purpose wearing your cop's uniform, being that detergent, being that, being that visible deterrent? Um, on the, the, for the Roblin COPP, we haven't done many of those events other than a, a couple, like I said, fundraisers. Um, we were at the trade show to try and build our volunteer list. Um, so there's a few that wear the t-shirt and, and it's visible on who we are, what we're involved with. Um, but again, we don't put the magnetic um, um, panel on on our vehicle because we switch it up we don't want them to know what I drive all the time like then the next time my partner goes out she'll drive or or he'll drive which the, what did they do <laughs> sorry Yes, okay, so um, one of the things that COPP also has an annual conference and 
uh, again, it's the information sharing there with other groups. The PAW, their group, they do the community events. Um, they just help to uh, patrol around, and uh, it, it's a it's a community choice what you want to get involved with. Can you talk about rural at all? Are you connected with the rural area, or how are you getting those reports in? I live in the rural area. Um, we haven't expanded that much out into the rural. However, a few years ago, it was it was busier with break and enters in the rural area. Um, but right now, the, the focus has been in, in the urban because that's where the activity was. It's, it used to be the Rural Crime Watch, and now th that's kind of, yeah, it's, it's um, fizzled out. But we have had a few local volunteers that, like, we'll go a, a little ways out into the community, and I certainly believe that our volunteer group, if we noticed that activity was on the rise in a certain area, then that's where we would kind of patrol to. Yeah. I think it's important to know that, as Councillor Morio mentioned, the councillors have been the recipient of the crime also, so we have a lot of empathy. We are hearing from the bosses, the constituents, we're listening. In the last two, three months, we met with the D Division, who are in command for all of Manitoba. We've met often with our MLA, who's been a wonderful supporter. We tried to meet with the uh, Minister of Justice, Minister Cullen. We have a request in to meet with him. We've met with uh, the local Staff Sergeant, uh, Star Staff Sergeant Campbell. And there's a lot happening. Is it working fast enough? Are they going to jail? Uh, some aren't, but just because we don't hear that it's happening, it doesn't mean, and if we don't report everything, whether we're on COP or not, these men and women who look after us won't have the information to go forward. So we're on it. We're trying to do your council is working pretty hard at it. This may sound stupid, but since there's such a small group here tonight, um, your the passenger that you have, do they have to be a COPP member? Or because, like, I know a lot of people who would love to come and drive around, walk around with me. However, they don't actually want to make the commitment to have to, like, commit to doing this. We would encourage them to be members, and it's more so for the liability coverage as a volunteer and, and that type of thing. Um, when we uh, go out and, and it lists as, as partners, um, so we switch it up and one time I'll drive, my partner records the information, the next time that person drives, I'll record the information, that kind of thing. Um, it's one thing if they wanna just get a feel for the program and if they wanna get started. We have some members that work out of town, but they, uh, when they're home, they go out on patrol. So they're not able to make the meetings and so forth, but they still wanna be involved and they, they are a member. They will submit their, their shift notes so that we can forward that on. So it, again, it's nice if we can get four hours. If they can only do two, we'll, we'll take two. I think with that, it, it's good to, that they are a member um, so that they are recovered by the liability and that we can screen them because all the members should have a criminal record check because we don't want the criminals being the patrollers out there. Um, so that, it's a good question, but uh, I think to get them initially trained to know what they're looking for, get them signed up, and then um, that they're covered under the liability insurance so that they're protected the when they're up. No. Basically, I would, personally, I would say no, that if you want to be an active formal patroller, you should be a COPB member. They can do, take the training. They don't have to go out every time, but if they want to go out with you, at least you have a partner going out with you. It just makes it m more convenient for yourself. If they see something and you can, they can collaborate what you've seen. 
Uh, I worked for Manitoba Hydro uh, Gas Division. At, we had, it was coal pal back then, so that's how come I just kept getting involved with it. So it's been, I've been in this for 25, 30 years now. Um, we, we have our partners that we normally go out with, but uh, I know Twala and I have gone out together just because you see a different viewpoint from somebody else and you're kind of uh, do it with them all the time. Uh, I was just going to ask about PAL and whether it still existed or through the utilities in the province, and, and is there any coordination between PAL and COP? I really don't know. Um, once we were bought out by Manitoba Hydro, I, it kind of seemed to fall by the wayside. I know we did report a lot of stuff. There was, you know, because we're out at, we're out at uh, on calls, so you were out at every time of the day and night, so we did report a lot of stuff. I would just like to comment and bring to your attention, uh, it's kind of a, a COP program that we have in a certain area of uh, Swan River, where I live, it's called H Block, and there's several streets involved, and uh, we have a coordinator who that if we see anything that's happening on those streets, it's sent to the coordinator, and the coordinator then funnels it out to everybody on our street. So now we're looking for a particular vehicle that's been prowling around, we're looking for, because somebody has been broken into, so we're all aware that that house was broken into. So we're more alert. We're also looking after people's homes, like during Christmas when they leave for holidays or they're not around. And we're patrolling by all the time, walking around, and we're observing. Now, we're not cop members, but we're almost acting in the same role. And it's very effective. And it's not only just for... Uh, criminals and things like that. It's, it's information sharing. Somebody's uh, cat went missing for two days. You know, be on the lookout for it. Or there's a coyote that's been hanging around. Watch your pets. That type of thing. And it works very well. I just wanted to bring it to your attention that it's, it's not strictly the cop, but these people are just local residents of that area taking charge themselves. Yeah, I think this could, that could be rolled into the COPP program. Uh, you wouldn't all have to be joined. You know, it could be one or two people out of there that could report to that whole group that this is going on in the other part of town and let them know too. Hey, any other questions? I'll, ju I'll just add to that too because, again, locally you can set up your your committee the way you want it, what works for you. And if that area, because Roblin is much smaller, obviously, but if you've got, uh, you know, the northwest corner that they want to patrol that area and you're, you're sharing that information, you might have a central coordinator for each, each quadrant or whatever. So you can make it tailor-made and and you that type of information sharing is exactly what the copp is for okay thank you Have, uh, has there been a communication with like steve is the coordinator locally from the art liaison with the rcmp uh, steve and i have talked a number of times and the rcmp will be uh, appointing one of their members uh, as the liaison officer with uh, the COP program to what, be sure. What kind of resources are we expecting from our local RCMP? Like, you know, she talked about giving out cell phone numbers. Like, is anything going to be, has there been talks yet as to how much coordinating there will be if this COP program does go ahead here with our local RCMP? Steve, you want to? Well, it's at the early okay. stages right now. And Here's the mic. That tonight, having these people from COPP present to is really, really good. It, basically, I've 
know about the COPP program a number of years ago in Alberta and a couple of different communities. Things evolved. We're in a different province. And essentially this is, I have this PowerPoint and another one, and I reviewed those a couple of times. And it's nice to have presenters here and fill in and tell about how Roblin is. Essentially that we're still uh, a work in progress. A lot of things we know, a lot of things we've got to work out. And with the transparency, that's going to be something involving as well. As far as having cell numbers of the members, there might be certain ones that are designated. Now, the liaison officer from the RCMP will be a constable who reports to me, and I'll show up at some of the meetings, and I'll be troubleshooting because if the thing takes off the ground, I want it to succeed and I want it to grow. And basically, I have experience in troubleshooting with COPP when there's been misunderstandings between a COPP and our RCMP or within the COPP itself. And we quickly addressed it and we moved on because it's about the community. And that's, that's where we're meeting here tonight. There's a lot of different viewpoints. There's a lot of people have been victimized in different ways. Um, you also have to look at, this is beyond the COPP, but as a community, root causes, socioeconomic uh, homelessness and basically uh, drugs and it goes on. We have a business consortium that meets roughly monthly and it's a real good cross-section cross of agencies and businesses and there's a number of things come up there so you have a holistic approach to how to resolve things in this community. One thing you got to keep in mind too is our crime severity index is fairly high. When I came here back in 2009 it was pretty high. We were top three in the province. We inched out uh, Thompson, we did that three years in a row, and basically you keep chipping away at it. As far as our shift schedule goes, there's been changes, but it's also, it's a baseline, and we change it as we need to, to get people in certain places and do certain patrols. A few years ago, we had 13 businesses hit. Uh, that was the last time we got hit really, really hard, and we're in, in another really low as far as property crimes go. And essentially that uh, we had people volunteering and working, working together. We had Miles Granfield and Dave Bettesworth very much, the retired now very much involved supervisors. We had people going out in their own vehicles and essentially being eyes and ears. And essentially we had patrol vehicles, we had bicycle patrols, we had foot patrols. And we just kept at it and we had a break and we solved it. But it really impacts the businesses and the community and as does RCMP because we want to solve crime. Uh, another thing that was brought up is about the judiciary. The judiciary is at a certain point. They're really pushing restorative justice and it takes different forms. Sometimes it's really good, sometimes community won't buy into it as much. Uh, what we're told by the Crown is that person's crimes come first, property crimes are second. And essentially there is exceptions. Obviously if you have somebody that's uh, done a lot, then a number of things, and we've got the evidence, and we've got the charges, then the Crown will take that as, as more serious and it'll bump up. But essentially the Crown offices are overwhelmed and I'm not making excuses, it's just a fact. And essentially they're going through transition right now too. And there's something from the Supreme Court of Canada called the Jordan decision that puts a timeline. The minute there's an information shortage, sworn a charge, the clock is ticking. And essentially if there's some delays and then some judge decides it's an unreasonable delay, the charge gets uh, thrown out the window and the three inches of paper that the police um, presented through their investigations, gets tossed aside, and the Crown is frustrated as well. But there's a number of different factors involved. We need community, whole community buy-in, and also thinking outside the box. And I think we've started that through the business consortium. We also have communities that care, that approaches the youth, and they come up with three priorities, and there's certain programs that come here to try to steer them away from these sort of things. We've had people that came up with our skateboard park. That was really good. And essentially, we also have a community mobilization where they meet weekly and essentially they're trying to intervene where there's an elevated risk before they get into the criminal justice system or through the, <clears throat> the domestics or the drugs or whatnot. And we keep chipping away at that. I sit on a number of committees and a couple of boards. Uh, some of these uh, committees I sit on with Dwayne White as well. And uh, basically, that it's, it's um, a work in progress. And essentially, I'm open to other opinions, other perceptions, because essentially, I don't see it all. I'm basically a police officer. I live in the community. I'm concerned. I have children and grandchildren in this area. Uh, basically, we call this home. This is the longest I've ever been anywhere within the RCMP, posting number seven. I've been here just over 10 years. Before I came here, I averaged two and a half years per posting. This is my third province. Swan River matters to me. 
and essentially what was home was in the Lac La Bishon area in, the, in Alberta, but that's not home anymore, it's changed. It's here. So basically we need people talking and sharing their diverse uh, views and their experiences, and then basically we need to sort through it and figure things out and keep moving ahead. Thank you. Okay, thank you, but uh, like as uh, Sergeant Hedson says, a lot of the administrative um, things are still in work in progress. We're, we got it as a group, as we move forward, there's gonna have to be policies and procedures and all that thing set up along with an executive group. Um, so there's a lot of unanswered questions yet, but like one of the things that you did mention that hopefully there's gonna be like a streamlined communication between local COP members and the local members so that you don't have to go through the long mind-numbing 911 experience and and whatnot so um so there's still a lot of unanswered questions and that's tonight's one of the first things uh, to get the interest going so that we can keep going forward so oh, stacy yeah, i got this later yeah so i'll talk about that later okay i just had a question does anybody know how the bear clan uh, interacts with the COP program. Is it anything like it? Is it different? Is anybody? No? Wrong crowd? Sorry. No. No, I just, I, w I wanted to know how they, whether they have uh, uh, authorization to do uh, citizens arrests and whatnot. Um, I know they sort of have maybe different mandate in picking up needles, but they are a safety organization. And I guess maybe that's something I'd like to search uh, myself. Um, we have a presentation coming up uh, on um, uh, Monday night and workshop on Tuesday in regards to uh, personal protection and life safety. And it might be just another, uh, another tool in our toolbox to uh, try and keep us safe. And uh, I don't want to get on about the justice system, but I think there's a, a really inherent problem um, it's been said that the uh, the police are merely the fishermen and what they do is when they catch the guy they just have to pass it on to the people that process it and it seems like the people that are processing our criminals are falling down on the job so that's another thing an area we have to work at so that's about all i got to comment any any other questions before we carry on Just on crime prevention, uh, I've been in many communities outside of Swan River, I've worked, and uh, they've had lots of problems similar to Swan River, break and enters especially. Uh, they put together several businesses and they hired a, a guard to patrol. And it saved them a lot of money in the long run that they had to pay for these break and enters. So just a suggestion, if you have a, a business, if you can liaison with several other businesses, you could hire a person to patrol these businesses and each share the cost, which wouldn't be much. It would give a person employment, one person, and he could do that on a regular basis and be paid for it. And perhaps that may work, who knows? It had worked in other communities. Okay, any other questions for the group? Okay. Well we'll keep moving on then um, so our next steps um, as we move forward so as like we mentioned in the slides and what was there is that uh, there is some sign-up sheets in the back uh, to express interest um, for that to see if this is a doable thing and right now like we do have a number of people here in the audience um, which is a great start wish it was more but uh, it's a starting group that we can work with if uh, people want to join. So we need to set up our like our executive and all the administrative requirements like getting liability insurance, all that in order, along with policies and procedures. Okay, and then we need to actually formally have people sign up and do the application package, which is, and then the criminal records check, and then they go through the screening process. And then once people pass that, they're formally uh, brought on board, they're trained, uh, it's a three to four hour training process. And I believe Twyla, you have like a workbook there that you can, um, and it's 
go through that so that we know what we're looking for, what type of notes we need to take, all that type of stuff. And then once the training is done, then we start patrolling. So, um, also with that, um, we've also had uh, some businesses come up, like uh, Stacey just mentioned. Um, the Swan Valley Co-op um, has already offered a $500 gas card uh, to help offset some of the patrolling gas for uh, people um, to go from there. So um, it's just one of the things where they want to look at crime reduction in the community, do their part. Um, so uh, Colin Peters has already offered up that for the group to uh, start using. He knows it doesn't go far, but he says it's an initial start to get going. So very much appreciative of that. So, um, so with that, that's all I have, unless somebody else or Twyla or Pat have any other. How many members are in the Roblin? I was just going to comment that uh, we've got 15 members right now, and probably the age range is from 35 to 70. Okay. The more, the better. Um, I know it's, we're going to probably start small, um, but word gets around, and hopefully people see the benefits and want to join. Um, for people that couldn't come out tonight, that's why I mentioned and I got uh, Jeremy here uh, recording tonight so that they can watch it and ask their questions and whatnot. I'll put the PowerPoint presentation attached also so that people can take a look at it and go from there. Um, also on the back table is my uh, business card uh, with my email address and phone number on there. So if people have any questions um, and want to express joining, feel free to give me a shout. Okay. Um, so with that, that's all I have for tonight, uh, unless somebody else has something else to say. but. Uh, Okay, thank you. So I think there's still lots of coffee in the back there. Um, I know it's cold. Please have a cup and go from there. And like Stan said, uh, he has a meeting next Monday. And this is just one cog in the wheel of a multi-prong approach to do uh, crime reduction in, this, in the valley. It's just one thing. There's many other things that we need to look at, other options, but all options are on the table and worth discussing. Um, and I'm sure our MLA, Rick Wolchek, is willing to take things up to the legislature and poke the bear up there. Um, I know we've put in our comments and suggestions, uh, but this is just one of many things that we need to work on. Thank you very much for coming out.